Welcome to SJS Arts. So today's topic is what if I was a filmmaker? What kinds of films would I make if I became a filmmaker? So I don't have any aspirations or goals of becoming a filmmaker, but I sometimes think about this topic for fun. It's always interesting to think about that if I got to the place where I could be creative and could just make films that I want, what kind of films would I make? Yeah, and I'm actually gonna use three stories as examples of what kinds of stuff I would make. These are actually all stories from books that I've been writing myself. So these are stories that I've created through the last few years. Again, they are unfinished, all of them, so some of the details are still lacking, but yeah. And again, there's like different levels of passion for each project. There's one that I'm really passionate about, then there's one that at this point seems a bit too generic and juvenile. And then there's one that I kind of came up with last year, which is kind of a story that I wouldn't think that I would be making, but it just ended up coming to my mind basically after I rewatched certain TV show. Yeah. But I'll talk about kind of more general things as well, that what kind of films I would make in general, what type of music would I make, what type of cinematography, what type of stories and themes, what type of characters, those types of things. And by the way, I would love to see response videos to this if anybody wants to do them. Again, I think this is a very interesting topic and you can, again, think about this topic from many different angles. So. If anybody wants to do a response to this, go ahead and I would be happy to see them. And you can also of course leave comments as always. So now I'll talk about my influences a bit. So there are a few directors that I think would be like very direct influences. And of course all of my favorites probably influence me in a way or another. But I think there are some that I would be stealing some ideas from them. Although. I definitely have this idea that if I was a filmmaker, I would want to make films that are as unique as possible. But of course, at this point in cinema history, it's pretty hard to be very unique. But I would try to find some like unique angle to these topics and stuff. But Mike Lee is one big influence. I think I would want to explore those types of characters, characters that he does that Again, okay, characters that aren't in the high place in society. Characters that have lots of flaws, but also lots of beauty in them. They have their quirks, but they have their good things about them. They are very humane. And I would li like to see the characters in a very empathetic way, and I don't want to look down on them. Yeah. So that would be definitely an approach that I would take. Yeah. Then Fassbinder is another one who tackles some of these similar types of themes as Mike Lee, but from a different angle. And again, I would also be making lots of queer films probably. Again, not all of the films will be queer stuff, but some of them will be. And one of the ones that I'm going to talk about is, is that it's a gay story. And about then another one is isn't and then third one has some gay characters, but it's not like a gay story. Yeah. But yeah, I would also kind of okay want to explore things like class and all, all kinds of taboos and things like that. And uh, various types of relationships like fast we did as well. Yeah. And I think the tone would be fairly similar that again the Films are quite dark, but there there is also humor in there, and there's also heart, and there's also more happy moments in there. But they would be probably quite bleak at moments, depending on the film. Yeah. Again, I wouldn't want to use the same kind of tonality in every single film, but I would like to switch it up a bit. And I love dark humor, so that's something that I would want to have in lots of my films, yeah. 
ten um, pelataar is someone who is really big influence on one of these films in terms of the visuals not otherwise that much then of course there is influence from other art forms as well i think one big influence would be dostoevsky okay both the okay kind of the visual sense that you get when you read his works but also the bleakness and those big philosophical themes and stuff obviously again i wouldn't be able to do it in the same way as he, he did because he's one of the biggest geniuses who ever lived in the planet but i would take some influence from him then eric Rome would definitely be a big influence especially how he creates the characters and how we find so much about the characters through the dialogue how we find about their philosophies their quirks their emotions their whole belief systems through the dialogue so that would be something that i would have lots of lots in my films those very intellectual um <laughs> discussions and and i would have those types of characters in my films that can characters that are very smart and often intellectual but not perfect but yeah so eric rome would be a big influence in terms of character and in terms of dialogue too then also there's the jean pierre lude character in the film mother and the whore by jean eustache and that would be a big influence on the characters as well because i would probably have some kind of snobbier and also pseudo intellectual characters in my films because i think those characters are often fun and interesting to me okay and i think some people hey hate those types of characters but i really like them so yeah but anyway let's move on from the influences and talk about my stories okay there is three of them one i'm passionate about still one of them i've kind of forgotten not totally forgotten but kind of moved on from and then there's another the third one that is like very random in a way and very different from everything else that i would make yeah but let's start with the one that i'm the most passionate about and this is a story that i came up with like a um, couple of years ago so it's a story about an 18 year old guy who still lives at home his parents find out that he's gay and they kick him out of the house okay and he just graduated high school he doesn't have a job he doesn't know what he wants to do with his life yet he has 200 euros in his pocket and he got gets kicked out so what will he do then yeah that's the big mystery and this actually this story starts in a very intense way it starts with a fight between this family in their family apartment it's kind of this city apartment few bedrooms and living room kitchen etc etc and the father is shouting at the kid that i'm gonna fucking kick you out and i cannot accept you now and the things like that again not with those words i'm just paraphrasing that type of stuff that he's gonna say again okay, they are kind of christian conservative family so they cannot just accept their child and we don't actually find out how they find out about his homosexuality we just go straight into this fight and then like five minutes after the kid is walking in the streets of this big city the cinematography by the way is in black and white so everything looks really bleak and again it's influenced by Bellatar's cinematography a lot again i won't make this film as slow but it will have that kind of bleak atmosphere to it as a Bellatar film would yeah and again i think this would be a very existential film where we really kind of explore kind of the existence of this one character and these big themes about human cruelty big themes themes about trauma and what can be the meaning of life to these people who have like very traumatic pasts 
and they and when they keep reliving trauma where can where can they go there and can they find the find um happiness and how would their healing process look like or can there even be a healing process so this is an extremely bleak film so when he goes walk down those streets he goes to a restaurant and he meets this guy who's like around 40 years old he's a gay guy too and they st struck up a conversation and they again find out that they have some similar interests and I think I've written in the book I can't remember that the, okay, the kid is reading a book in the restaurant so, so then the older guy sees the book and he has read it too so he goes to talk about that book with the kid but the kid is quite reserved as he has this very traumatic life behind him and in front of him too so so he's kind of a bit afraid about talking about the book but the older guy does most of the talking but then in the end the, the our main character the 18 year old kid can goes with this older man to their apartment and I, I won't I won't describe the details but yeah um, and he ends up living there again this older guy seems like a ni nice guy at first but there's a bit of a more of a kind of a controlling and exploitative way about him too and but he's like kind enough to let the guy live there the main character and feed him give him some money and stuff but then when when our main character sees that the older guy is not like the kindest person out there he leaves but he doesn't have any place to go and he doesn't have that much money but then he meets even a more awful guy I don't actually know how they meet yet I haven't again worked out all the details but the next guy is like a total sociopath so the first guy was quite awful but not totally awful there was some good in him but the second one is someone that is just pure evil basically so if you have seen Mike Lee's naked obviously there are these two awful characters there's the David Thule's character but then there's the total sociopath so you can kind of imagine that although the again these characters aren't like David Thule's by the way but I'm just say that there's kind of a bit of a similar contrast as there is in Mike Lee's naked and again he has this two night thing with this more awful guy he kind of struggles to escape this sociopath because he's again even more controlling and a total piece of shit and very violent as well and abusive so so yeah but then in the end he gets out of that and he goes back to wandering the streets and again there is these big tracking shots of him like walking in the streets and looking all existential and stuff looking very very sad contemplative and stuff like that yeah and these shots are again often like very wide and very beautiful and I'm gonna utilize the architecture a lot in that too and yeah but then he ends up back in the first guy's apartment and he goes to live there again yeah so there are these two guys that he meets but again there the first guy he, that he met that he is with now again for the second time he doesn't like change his ways and he's still very controlling and an asshole and everything so so yeah this our main character just doesn't get a break and then I, I'm not sure how this story will end yet but it will probably end in a not a very optimistic way I don't know yet but might end in suicide or something like that or maybe the end will be kind of open that we don't know exactly where he goes he might be just walking somewhere and we have to some like beautiful shot in rain or in fog where he just walks 
looking down on the street, <laughs> looking all sad and stuff, something like that. Yeah. Okay, and there would be influence from Bellatar, then I think from Mike Lee, Mike Lee's Naked, and then some past spinner films like Fox and His Friends, for example. Yeah. But I think this is the one that I'm really passionate about. I think this would make a really good film if, if I could kind of see my vision come true that I have in my head. Okay, and that's very specific look for it that I have in my mind. In my mind. And the visual aesthetic will be very important. Yeah. And again, this wouldn't be very easy film to watch because it's so dark and bleak. But I think if if it came out good, it would say a lot about trauma and human cruelty. About finding your way in life and things like that. But yeah, I'm really excited to write this book someday and finish it. Again, I've written a bit of the beginning, but not the whole thing. As I still have some story elements that I need to work through. Yeah. But then the second um, story is the one that I actually came up first out of these three. This one that I just described was the second one, but this is the first one. So this kind of sounds to me like a bit more generic and juvenile now that I'm a bit older. Although this is supposed to be kind of like a dark comedy. Again, it's kind of inspired by this Charles Bukowski's post office and this TV show, Californication. So this story is about, again, a middle-aged white guy that is very depressed and he's an alcoholic, so again, sounds very generic and that typical for me, for me type of, again, film about a loser white guy, loser middle-aged white guy, yeah. But again, he wasn't always a loser. He was actually a university professor, but he gets gets um, fired from the job because he has an affair with the dean's wife and the dean finds out that they had an affair. So that's how he gets fired from his job and then he also has to get divorced when his wife finds out that he has cheated on her. And then they also have a son who was 12 years old at that point. And then he doesn't see his child or his ex-wife for many years and he just leaves this meaningless existence, indulging in art drinking every day, eating shit foods from the supermarket, and then he's self-pitying all the time. I mean, he even calls it the self-pitying disorder in the book, yeah. And he talks about his nihilistic electricity flowing through his brain and stuff like that. I was just re reading it, I hadn't written it in a few years, so it, some of it, so I was like, did I actually write this stuff, yeah. Yeah, and this is actually situated in New York. For some reason, I really see this story in New York. And this guy, even though he doesn't have a job and he's an alcoholic and everything, he kind of has money from his past, so he can actually support this meaningless lifestyle, even though he has a, doesn't have a job. Yeah. But then there is this kind of redemption arc that he goes to a bar one day and he talks to the guy working there and then he has a long walk after that bar and he starts to think that could I actually redeem myself like the waiter in the bar said that could I actually change my life yeah and then he kind of realizes that he's walking the street where his ex-best friend lives or at least used to live they haven't seen each other in a few years and then he gets the courage to go knock on the door and see whether his ex-best ex friend, ex friend would kind of accept him back into his life. And he does, and then they have a 
long conversation. This is actually the point where I have kind of stopped writing, but I know uh, like the in broad strokes how the story will develop after this. So they have a very long discussion and they talk about life and how he could get his life back together and he's still kind of very confused at whether he actually has the guts to become a better person or if he wants to continue the self-pity the alcoholism and that stuff and yeah and then there's then after that there is this up and down journey with him through redemption he tries to get in contact with his ex-wife and tries to again create a relationship with his son that that is now 17 years old and who he hasn't seen in five years because the mother got the soul custody so so there then again they don't accept him back immediately but he tries hard but then he gets some fucks up because he's obviously addicted to alcohol and stuff so he cannot just in a moment's notice stop that and again by the way I know so many alcoholics from my own life pretty much my whole family so I know no, no alcoholics like inside out due to that so I think the portrayal of alcoholism in this film will be quite accurate because I know what these people are like unfortunately yeah and again this character is inspired by the by Charles Bukowski a little bit then Hank Moody in Californication a little bit I mean the fact that he sleeps with the D's wife and has that affair like I mean that's something that Hank Moody would do in Californication I mean he even did doesn't he even actually sleep with the Dean's wife in Californication there's the Peter Gallagher, the actor, the character, and he sleeps with his wife. Wasn't he like a dean or something? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I actually just realized that that actually didn't inspire this, that part, but I just realized that connection. Yeah. Um, yeah, where was I? Yeah, so an accurate portrayal of alcoholism, and then... Again, this kind of will be funny, just like Bukowski's books are. I don't know whether I will have like like the horse tracks in here or anything like that, but there are certain things that are similar. Yeah. Okay, and this is kind of like a fairly generic story. Okay, and this kind of middle-aged white guy who is depressed. Okay, and that's been done so many times, but I'll have to think of a more kind of creative angle to this still but I think the basic story is good it's just quite generic yeah although this will probably be mostly just about the humor but there will also be some emotion there and the character is by the way like a full-on snob as well so there's these fun intellectual rants in the story as well that will create lots of the humor yeah and again, I'm not sure how it ends. Again, it won't be like that sentimental speed and ending where everything is okay, but it will probably be like a oh, full on bleak either. Yeah. Will be something in between, I think. Yeah. But then let's move on to the third story. It's actually a fantasy story, believe it or not. So that's why I said that this will be like something completely different. So last year when I actually rewatched Game of Thrones, it like really for some reason inspired me to try to create my own fantasy world. I don't know how, how that happened, but it just happened like naturally. And this is actually still in quite of an early stage. I know the kind of basic world and what it would be like. And it's actually kind of a Game of Thrones copy. Again, in the way that there are like these different kingdoms and stuff that have different ideas and they most of them want more power and stuff so in that way it's a bit similar to Game of Thrones but also very different so here we don't have like families and stuff like that and no dragons <laughs> either but but it will have that kind of political battle stuff that we have in Game of Thrones as well 
But for me, the different kingdoms are like, all represent like a different political philosophy and ideology. So the most powerful one represents kind of these, again, conservatives with lots of fascist leanings, not like full on fascism and not full on authoritarianism even, but there are lots of those tendencies there and they have like very rigid hierarchies and they rely on tradition and again they have lots of money they have these huge old cities and stuff yeah and the story actually starts in their kind of main city where we see a there's like one guy from a different kingdom coming to visit these conservatives and they bring or bring on a kind of a modern painting obviously in this world modern painting means different like different things than in our world but they bring the painting as a gift and then the conservatives look but fuck like this doesn't look anything like our paintings from 500 years ago and that kind of sums up their ways that they all, all, all believe in tradition and that nothing should ever change basically so we kind of see their ideology through that discussion about that painting yeah i thought that that would be like a fun way to kind of start start the story and a fun way to actually kind of sum up their ideology yeah but our main characters are actually these characters from an anarchist island but they have to escape that island because there are actually two brothers in the anarchist island one of the brothers betrays the other one and he goes in bed with the conservatives because they promised him lots of money and, and a good position but then the other person believes in those anarchist ideas and they have to escape with a boat then they go to the other side of the sea and there's this area this kind of like huge forest area that belongs to no one so that's kind of like a wild west type of place but a forest that belongs to no one and then their story starts there again i don't have any all of the details yet again i've kind of started with the world building more than the story then the second biggest kingdom is kind of a liberal kingdom that again there is rule of law there are some freedoms to the citizens more than in the conservative place but there's still quite a lot of issues with political power and scheming and stuff like that but it's for the most part a very functional city and it's kind of like a mix between some of these other societies so there's a bit of everything there and they have this huge like city with these beautiful white buildings and stuff yeah but then my favorite kingdom is they are people called the divine beings and they are these kind of um, like how, how would I say kind of people who love art and they love luxury they have orgies <laughs> and stuff like that they are okay they are like the main character in my favorite book this actually has inspired this part a lot again this against nature by Yori Gal Huismans again again here like if i read from this okay the main character is a decadent ailing aristocrat who retreats to an isolated villa where he indulges his taste for luxury and excess so that's the type of people that they are they love beauty they love aesthetics again all of their buildings are full of kind of um paintings and stuff and different colors everything is very weird and beautiful and the characters are very snobby and again weird all of them look like track queens basically all of them are bisexual so it's this kind of weird fun place i think that's kind of the place that brings lots of the kind of comedic appeal to this story and again they are my, my favorite ones and i'm actually gonna probably gonna bring on lots of the snobbery discussion and that stuff into those characters and lots of art commentary and philosophical commentary and that kind of stuff to them 
and they will be fun. And they are actually very intelligent too, so they actually know how to scheme their way through to a better position as well, so we will see that kind of stuff too. Yeah. And and yeah, those are the kind of main kingdoms. Again, some of the kingdoms are bigger than others. Okay, the anarchist island is very small actually. There isn't ma many people living there, but our main hero again has to escape that island and have his journey. Yeah. Again, I have no fucking idea where this story is gonna go, but yeah, again, that was some kind of an outline of this story. And by the way, I would see this story more as a maybe TV show than a film because this is such a huge world that two hour film won't be enough. I think it would need at least 10 episodes, probably even maybe many seasons. Again, I don't know the story yet, so it's hard to say. Yeah, and you could have lots of prequels and spin-offs and everything about this one, but I think this will actually have a very dark ending. I think the conservative idiots will win in the end, because the sad fact about life is that bad ideas often win. So, often win. Yeah, something I've I have had to accept, which I don't like to accept, but that seems to be true. Just the flow of humanity. Yeah, so this will be like very political and again adult fantasy, not young, young adult, but actually like adult political, more serious fantasy. But there will be lots of fun to be had there with the divine beings and other stuff too. And I don't know yet whether there will be like magic or stuff like that in this world. I think there might be. And I'm kind of have the kind of idea in this world that there are also, also these kind of far away places that we don't know that much about where we could kind of expand the story later just like kind of Game of Thrones has that yeah but we'll see where that goes but again if I kind of sum up like themes that I would like to explore in my films and what they would be like in two minutes yeah so again I would be exploring characters that you don't usually see in stories, so characters that aren't those six-pack apps, action heroes, or those Miss America beauties necessarily, but they are these like regular people, they have lots of flaws, but they are also very intelligent and they have good heart to them often. But I will also I'll also want to um show the cruel and the awful side of humanity too and comment on that yeah and i will also probably again if i had like a big filmography i would probably make lots of political films as well probably mostly about the kind of individual versus the system type type of thing and i've also been thinking of making this political satire trilogy where in each film i would make fun of a different type of ideology so one could be about let's say communism, other one could be about fascism, third one could be about centrist cowards or something, again, whatever it could be, yeah, again, those were, by the way, just examples, yeah, um, yeah, and then, again, I would definitely put lots of effort to the aesthetics, again, that one that I I'm the most passionate about that one is especially that one especially would be one that where I would put my all my heart into the aesthetics yeah in black and white but I would also love to make more colorful films and I think this fantasy show would be very colorful yeah and then again there would be lots of philosophical discussions in these films and also discussions about art and things like that because I, I like that and I think that would be fun to write, yeah. But yeah, I would also want to be like a very kind of varied filmmaker and not just keep making the same story again and again. Yeah. But yeah. And by the way, Li Changdong is another big influence that I would have. Definitely how he uh, tackles those characters that you don't usually see in 
films like in films like Oasis, for example. Yeah. But anyway, that's it for this video. Again, there would be more things to say, but I have to condense this video into something. So, but again, if you want to do a response video, I would love to see that. And yeah, but anyway, thanks for watching. Don't drink all the coke. What type of films would you make? And sayonara.